Hello, Comic-Con Revolution Ontario. Thank you so much for coming to our panel. Um, I'm Jason Inman. If you don't know, I was the host of DCL Access. I'm also the co-writer of Jupiter Jet. I'm also, you can see me a lot of times on Collider. Uh, and my esteemed co-host here is Ashley Victoria Robinson. And uh, we co-host a podcast called Geek History Lesson. And this panel is a live recording of our podcast where basically we take one subject matter or debate and we talk about it in less than an hour. Most of the times we're just being like, here's who Thanos is, right, Ashley? You did that one. That's right, I did. Uh, and we're also gonna be joined by John Boy Myers, who's the artist of Teen Titans and Royals and a bunch of other cool stuff. And cover artist of Jupiter Jet. But he is a very successful comic book artist and he's selling stuff right now, so he'll run in late. When, we, when he runs in, I want everybody to like, we're gonna give him a loud rand, round of applause. I'd love it if we could just do like, you know, like in Cheers where they went, Norm! I'd love if we could all go, John Boy! Oh, here we go. John Boy! <laughs> Perfect it's timing. It's all good. We were just talking about how famous and successful yeah, you are. Yeah, we were are. talking about how very successful you are, sir. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Go ahead and pull that mic over to your, oh, to, your, to your good mouth so our audio listeners can hear you as well. Is that like being internet famous or like just infamous? No, it's way better than It's like than being famous. really famous. Um, okay, so the title of this panel is Infinity Gauntlet versus Green Lantern Rings. That's not mm. the only weapons we're going to talk about because there are plenty of other weapons out there, but there this, it's the two weapons that Comic-Con Revolution thought would really sell this panel. So... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I don't blame them. I don't blame them. So um, really quickly here, what I'd love to do is, since John Boy is, this is his first episode that he's ever been on the podcast before, we'd like to do a little section uh, on our podcast called The Meet Cute, where we talk about where people first encountered this thing. But since it's John Boy's first appearance, I'd love to hear his meet cute for how did you get into comic books, John Boy? Uh, you know, I've been doing comics since I was a little kid. So my first introduction to comics was my dad, who's a military guy. He was an MP, and he, uh, um, they would always, like, some of the GIs on base would get drunk. So they would put them in the holding tank, and they would run to the local shop at and buy comics for the GIs so they'd dry out a little bit. So my dad used to bring home all these old war comics. So it was like Weird War Tales, Sergeant Rock, Creature Commandos, and... I was just like, oh, this is so cool. And my dad would like steal pens and stuff from work <laughs> and let us draw stuff. So I would do my own, military pens. They were like the old military pens. Like if you guys are military, they're like black or black, red, green, and blue. And they're just like, they dry out like, <laughs> like in a second. But um, it was military. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Work. So, um, and then one day he brought home a Captain America, a king size annual, bicentennial annual. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, I don't know what issue it is. I, you think I'd go out and buy it, but it's, uh, Drawn by Jack Kirby, it's Captain America versus the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants with Magneto and Mr. Peepers, mm -hmm. and he fought those guys. And I didn't know who Captain America was, and it, like seeing a superhero comic for the first time after reading war comics all the time, I was just like super floored, and I was that was that was it for me. I was like, oh, who is Captain America, and what what is is why why does he have a shield and. <laughs> Why does he have a gun? But I can imagine being a military kid, like seeing Captain America, you're probably like, I'm all in. It's oh, of guy, course. Guy that wears yeah. the flag. I mean, we yeah. have Captain America in the audience oh, yeah. right here. Yeah. So. <laughs> no, no, military brat, too. So there's a strong sense of patriotism in the family, you know, growing yeah. up in a military base. And uh, uh, that was it for me. And then I was, I would do my own comic books. I would work, like, for months mm -hmm. and then sell them outside to friends or trade so instead them. Instead of a lemonade stand, you had a comic stand? Uh, kind of, yeah. <laughs> like we would do comics, like all the neighborhood kids mm -hmm. would do comics, and then we would do that, and then we'd work really hard on them, and then we'd sell them for like forty cents because we were stupid, we didn't know <laughs> that, you know, because we thought, well, comics are forty cents, so it's like yeah. we have to sell ours for forty cents. So then we'd get that, and then I'd go buy another comic book, and and <laughs> it, blow it, the profits. Yeah, <laughs> just yeah. like real comics. That's right just now. like real comics. So uh, that was that was that was it for me. I've been doing comics since I was four. And then professionally... Um, Since you were five. Yes, for five. Um, yeah, I started doing comics professionally, I think, in 2000. But prior to that, I would do. I did a lot of indie stuff with guys like Robert Kirkman and Tony Moore mm -hmm. and Corey Walker and Nate Bellegarde. And um, I was probably the least talented guy in that whole group, but it was. I, I learned a lot. I, find I don't that know hard if I to agree believe. with that. Yeah, I find that hard to believe. You know, I, I think everybody gets kind of like... I think every artist hates their own work. And like 
when you, when you look at your stuff, you're always kind of like chasing the ghosts of guys that you think are really good. Mm -hmm. So it's always held to that standard and to your standard. Because when people all post something, people are like, oh, that's really cool. I'm like, oh, man, it's garbage. But that's like, okay. <laughs> you know, I'm just glad people like it. You know, I'm just like, I'm glad that I, I've been able to eat out a living. It's, it, I'm really fortunate. And I get to, you know, meet great guys like you and, and fans and engage with people and stuff that we love. It's like, man, you know, life, life could not yeah. be better. All right. So let's get to the debate here. Let's start off right with the title of this panel, The Infinity Gauntlet versus Green Lantern Rings. All right. So if you don't know, I mean, I would assume, has the majority of this room, has everybody in this room seen Avengers Infinity War? Is there anybody in this room that hasn't seen it? Spoilers. There's one person. Three people have, four people have not seen Avengers Infinity War. Oh, wow. What? Oh, wow. Whoa. <laughs> um, go see it. Well, let me tell you, as someone movie. who's seen Solo already, go see Avengers. <laughs> oh, is Solo not good? I, I will second oh. that. As someone who's seen Solo, go see Avengers again. Um, it's a much better use of your $17. Wow. Yeah. So um, so we see in that movie, if you haven't seen that movie, uh, this is not really spoilers. Uh, the Infinity, spoilers for a 30-year-old comic yeah, book. Uh, yeah, the Infinity Gauntlet is this giant gauntlet that Thanos can use the Infinity Gems inside. They're called stones in the movie. Now the comic books are retroactively calling them stones now because the movie's call them stone oh. and they have all kinds of powers there are they had alter reality it can alter time it can control minds it can control your heart it can control basically anything and if you've seen the movie it kind of seems like it is a catch-all weapon that can do anything you think of like it's limit un, limitless power now on the other side of it we also have a weapon that can almost do anything that any writer wants to do at the same time, with the exception of it's all limited by your will. How strong is your mind to make this happen? Because there have been instances in comic books where we have seen the Green Lanterns create a living being. I don't know why I said that word weird. It's weird. A living being. Also, Orange guys. Lanterns have done that. Yeah. Like oh, there has, they, right. they have been a sentient living being from this, you know. Uh, and that's something, I don't know, have we seen the Infinity Gauntlet create life? No, but take life. It's taken life. Taken life. It can, yes. it can change alter, but I don't think we've seen it. But Green Lantern Rings, with the exception, Green Lantern Rings don't mind control. They don't, they can you, They can make somebody, you can do time travel right. with a Green Lantern Ring. Mm -hmm. But I think there's a certain no no to that too. You're not supposed to bring people back like how yeah. Jordan got mad because he brought all of Coast City like the Coast City back. can't bring yeah. people back yeah. from the dead. That's right. That's right. And then you can't like kiss them and stuff because it's weird. But he did that too. You need a star so. sapphire for that. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> but it is one we got a ring for that. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> but it is one of those things, especially yeah. When you have the white lantern, the the guy okay. who can control all of the colors. It, again, the those rings actually become pretty powerful. Like they're again, it's one of these things where like it basically can do anything the writer wants them to do. They're like almost unstoppable. Is there any argument to a Green Lantern ring beating somebody holding the Infinity Gauntlet? Can somebody with one of these rings? Let's just okay. Let's make it the max ring. It's the White Lantern with all the powers, the maximum powered lantern you could ever have. Could a uh, White Lantern? Well, it can kind of do the same thing almost then, yeah, because it's bit. powered by will. But I think the only thing is like it also uh, has a bunch of different rainbow colored stones. That's true. <laughs> that's true. And like, uh, but but are they still the caveats so they can't affect yellow do they have any like no it's a unlimited oh, like a, so wow. if you're a white lantern you can use all of these colors with unlimited basically power it's kind of like the riddle like of the sphinx so the immovable object meets the unstoppable force you know, <laughs> yeah. right? surrender right you just uh i don't know like i don't know which way it goes who's wielding then. it though like is it like that's Al Jordan the real question or Guy i think is the wielder because the rings are sort of you can gauge their power sets based on the wielder and the constructs that they make. So I find it more interesting and more compelling storytelling when it's a creative person wielding right. the ring because they can do more interesting things with it and more innovative things with it. Like how Jordan makes like a baseball glove, a baseball bat, lame. and a fist. So lame. And Kyle Rayner, right. because he's an he artist, the giant and John mango Stewart, robot, which who's is awesome. an architect, make the most interesting constructs. Mm -hmm. And then t to me, that I would extrapolate that they're more powerful right. wielders, which is why Kyle yeah. was the Omega Lantern. Oh, there's an Omega Lantern? Yes, there's an Omega oh, Lantern Omega now. Men by Tom King, great yeah, book. Yeah, it's pretty good. If you haven't read it, oh, Omega well, Man, go check it out. You can borrow it from us. Well, oh, let's, okay. let's, <laughs> let, well let's flip this. I mean, it's all about the, the wearer. Let's give Hal Jordan the Infinity Gauntlet. Let's give Thanos uh, the White Lantern Ring. Ooh. We flip it. Does it change anything? Does Hal Jordan is Hal Jordan unstoppable with an Infinity? Okay, there's Gauntlet? little kids in here, so I'm going to say this really nicely. Hal Jordan's a dick 
So <laughs> he would probably, I don't know how Jordan's the most responsible person of all potential lanterns. He I mean, has, he's better he, than Guy Gardner. He has been a supervillain before. Um, he has I think been. He, I think he would go crazy. I think yeah. he would get corrupted because yeah. he's that type of guy to where, like, it's kind of like Batman with a ring too because mm-hmm. you have that, you feel like you're the absolute moral center and you're the judge, jury, and executioner of what you think is right. Mm-hmm. Instead of letting life find its own way, your morals you become know. skewed. Oh, of course! Yeah. Like absolute power corrupts absolutely. So, like, I, like spoilers. Like, if you haven't seen the movie, like Thanos is not really painted as a villain. He's more of like, I'm here to like you know green the universe kind of deal. And it gets a very similar treatment to Killmonger, where you're like, I get that you're bad, but I can see what you're talking about. Yeah, but if you if you have <laughs> the, those are the best villains, stones, though. Yeah. you can make infinite infinite resources so it's kind of like dude like your argument falls apart you just want to kill people that's yeah. true he does he, yeah, yeah. he basically he just wants to kill people like, that's all he wants that's, to kill I think I think that's his whole thing like uh, I don't know I, I think it's it's driven by the wearer mm-hmm. I think you absolutely well, I think, yeah. it is interesting as well because I just finished um, they just released the new hardcover edition of Zero Hour and oh, if you haven't yes. read DC Comics Zero Hour, it's this Dan Jurgens event where it is where Hal Jordan goes yeah. crazy and Hal Jordan remakes the universe. It actually happens. Spoilers for a comic that came out in 1994. Um, <laughs> but he literally remakes the universe in his own image. Now, he basically just remakes the same DC Comics universe because I think, you know, comics, he can't actually change anything. But... If he had actually, his argument was that he was going to bring back everybody that died, everybody that died in all these superhero <sighs> incidents, everybody's dead lovers, the not the Barry Allen. Uh, he didn't bring back Barry Allen, which was weird because Barry Allen is his best friend. So he, <laughs> not that best friend. Uh, but he basically remade the universe exactly the way it was before. Um, so it is one of those ideas that, like, Hal Jordan with an Infinity Gauntlet would do kind of the same thing as Thanos. He would be like, I'm going to rewrite reality. I'm going to bring all the dead... Oh, so he's going to do the opposite. Instead of killing half the universe, he's going to bring all the dead people back. He's going to make even more strain on our he's limited He's the anti-Thanos. Yes. He's the anti-Thanos. He is. Oh. Yeah. He, he's like, okay. I, everybody yeah. dead should be alive. And Thanos with his White Lantern ring would just be like, I got to stop this guy because half the people should be dead. <laughs> it's like, you're crazy. You're crazy. Yeah. Thanos, are, Thanos so, would make yeah. great use of the Black Lantern power. So he's yeah. just like... Instead of it being more like a nuclear blast, it would be like a sniper. He's like, you're dead, you're dead, you're dead, you're dead. Like, he'd have to do it all by himself. I will say, you know, the, the thing about this debate is that we, I think it was weirdly that we've stumbled upon that since Hal Jordan is the anti-Thanos, um, I think we <laughs> yeah. right now are coming up with the best new, like a weird Blackest Night event where yes. Hal Jordan builds some sort of machine that channels all the Green Lantern rings and Look, decides, DC and Marvel has a perfect creative team here to write their next amalgam yeah, comic. I, this, is already, <laughs> like, this is already writing itself. Like It's Hal Jordan being like, I want to save all the dead people. Nobody should be dead. We're not going to make any money off of that. We're like, no. oh, thanks, chumps. There you go. Yeah, but who's be, dead thanks. right now? Thanks, like, nobody. His dad? Well, who's dead who anyone cares about right now? Does Thanos have a dad? Is his dad dead? His dad, he just killed his dad in uh, Jeff Lemire's run at Thanos. Is that the one where they gave him a name? Oh, Thanos killed and his, his name dad? his name is like Thanos Dion killed. Warwick or something? Uh, Dion Warwick? Dion. No, Thanos' real oh. name is Dion. But it's spelled like Dion Warwick. Thanos? Oh, really? Because, yeah, yeah. Wow. So you know, Thanos isn't a good enough name. Yeah. But they just did that, yeah, because they showed his dad and he just killed his dad or something like that. His you know, dad is weird. Yeah, we well, we're wrong in that relationship. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, dude, like, what happened there? Hal Jordan also has a dead dad. Yep. Yeah, see? Love they're, dead dads. They're the same character, man. I also have I a dead so. dad, so watch out, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the, the title of the event, Blackest Dad. <laughs> Blackest Dad, yeah. <laughs> no, Bring don't him back. call Bring it him back. What? What's wrong with that title? <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think, though, like, um, there's a lot of parallels with both characters, and I, I think they're, where, where's the moral ground on that? I think that's the thing is like, um, I think you're right. It goes down to who the wielder was because mm-hmm. I think, I think a uh, guy like Guy Gardner with a, yeah. a with the Infinity Gauntlet or with all the rings, I would like to see that comic made because then <laughs> he's kind of like, nah, you know, everyone can do their own thing. It's okay. Mm-hmm. If anybody steps out of line, what he thinks is like, yeah, I think he'd still do his job. I don't think absolute power would corrupt him because he's always a really. Jerk. I don't think so. I think he'd turn into a bully. No. I think he'd turn into like an. He's ultimate already bully. a bully, though. He'd I think he'd the become same. even worse. I think so. Like it'd be like ultimate wedgies for the universe. You know what? There's yeah. infinite wedgies. That's another <laughs> event right there. You can take that, Marvel. You know what? Maybe John Stewart, because John Stewart actually John for me was choice. my Green Lantern growing up. Not Ryan Reynolds. Sorry, Ryan. But yeah, um, he's no one's Green Lantern. Yeah, I know. He's doing fine. That's so yeah, he's a pit bull <laughs> yeah. now. Uh, see, true. for me, it'd be Kyle. It'd be Kyle Rayner because Kyle Rayner. Hottest Green Lantern. Yeah, because Kyle Rayner is <laughs> the guy who kept the Green Lantern torch alive. He's become the White Lantern. He's become the Omega Lantern. And he's never been corrupted. With the, ex- with the exception of the time that he was infected by Parallax. But that doesn't count. Look, I'm going to just say give it to Chip. 
He's a cute squirrel looking alien. He doesn't want to hurt anyone. So he could so he just saying, use it to murder trees. You're saying Chip is the guy that would he would he would he kill would half the trees order, in the universe. He would restore half the nuts in the universe are gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're just buried underground for the next time he needs them. We're here for the nuts. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. We're here for the nuts. All right. Uh so I would love to see by uh, let's do round of applause. We have the ultimate is okay, is Thanos the ultimate wielder of the Infinity Gauntlet, we think? Is Thanos, is there anybody else in the Marvel Universe that we think could do better? No? Yes. No? Could do better? Oh. Either, it doesn't matter. You think Adam Warlock, okay, yes. okay, all right. Thank That's you. an all interesting right. good, good, So go Adam Warlock. Okay, so let's say Adam Warlock is our in, Infinity Gauntlet wielder. In the DC Universe, we're going to make it the White Ring, because it's the ultimate combination. You can access any of the powers. Is it Hal Jordan? Or is it Kyle? Or like, who's the green? Who's the ultimate? I think, I think John, John Boy's assertion of John Stewart right, John is Stewart. a good one. Sorry, right. The most so, level-headed of the all right, Lanterns. So by a round of applause, who thinks that John Stewart with a white ring can beat the Infinity Gauntlet? By round of applause. Go right now. Okay. John Stewart, come on. All right. All right. Now let's hear a round of applause for Adam Warlock wielding the Infinity Gauntlet. That sounds so like it's a pretty, it's pretty. It's pretty even. Low, it's yeah. pretty even. I think. I think they would be friends. They'd be like, "Hey, man, we got all this power. Let's just like make sure no one like there's no other Omega level threat that's come." They, I think they would. They're just, very responsible dudes. I think so. I think yeah. they would take care of like people like Galactus eating planets and stuff. Well, I think you know? Adam Warlock would create that weird soul dimension like he did in the comic books and invite John Stewart in, and then every time that Adam Warlock got angry, John Stewart would just be calm him down with his emotion powers. Which uh, which ring should Galactus have? What is the real question? <laughs> That's a big a ring. ring. <laughs> That's a big ring. Yeah, yeah. He would probably eat them, wouldn't he? Like, if he ate them, would he consume their? Powers? You know, he could Ooh. eat Mogo. Galactus could eat Mogo. <laughs> That's true. And he would get the ring. I think it'd be it inside his stomach. Eat, it, I, it, I smell crossover so bad right now. Because <laughs> like, like the Green Lantern's kind of like has a Guardians of the Galaxy type thing going yeah. on. Because mm-hmm. you have Chip, who's basically Rock yeah. Raccoon. You have like, you know the title of that event is. What? Infinite cuisine. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. It's like. Uh, Wait, what's the dog Green Lantern's name? Gnort? Uh, Gnort. Gnort? Yeah. Oh, yeah. is he a dog? Yeah. yeah. Oh. And wow. then there's a there's Dexter. There's a lot of animal uh, Lanterns. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, you know, aliens all over, and there's still cats who are on alien planets. That's kind of weird. Now, well, I mean, cats are Earth? great. Yeah, I mean, but I'm just saying, like, maybe it could be like a. Like a I don't know. All right, Spaghetti so monster. yeah, something. So like, I have a different. list of other weapons, and I'd love to talk to them about like our thoughts about them and whether we think at any point. I, I think I'm going to slightly, based off your applause, I think I'm going to slightly give it to Infinity Gauntlet. I think Infinity Gauntlet was a little bit louder, but not by much. It's interesting how we designed. Uh, we almost stopped. I thought the Infinity Gauntlet was going to like just destroy everything here, <laughs> but it seems like <laughs> that's like, what it tends yeah. to do. Right out of the gate, we already found something that can equalize the Infinity Gauntlet. All right, so I have a list of other comic book weapons. Um, I would love to us talk through them. Okay. Think like whether we like them, whether we think they're way overpowered or just stupid, and then if they think if, well, yes, yeah, <laughs> oh, the answer is going to be yes on most of them. But uh, do we think this could take out? Adam Warlock chilling with Jon Stewart inside the Soul Dimension <laughs> Infinity Gauntlet. Where? All right, the first one is um, Jack Kirby's Mother Box. Oh. All right, so this is another thing. Uh, the Mother Box mainly can be used to boom tube to apocalypse other dimensions outside the multiverse. But it remakes reality too. But it also can basically do anything the writer wants it to. It's a magic mystery box, man. Well, this is also the problem with comics and with some comics <laughs> characters. I always cite Scarlet Witch for this. Is there's when you get too powerful, you can basically, you're just a plot device for whatever the writer wants to do yeah. with you. Yeah, and yeah. The, I feel like the mother box is very that. That yeah. sounds lazy, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you think about the mother box, John Boy? Um, I think, here's the thing, like, I think you have too many things that are MacGuffins that are too powerful that are running around, and there's like, to me, if you're going to have things like that, there always has to center around rules because there's always rules for the universe. There's mm-hmm. yin, yin, there's yang, and they don't really seem to do that. They just think. With the that, fourth world? Yeah, well, with everything, I think mm-hmm. everything like in DC and Marvel, it's like it's this thing that is omnipotent stuff, and then you have the Phoenix Force that just eats everything. You know, you're just like, <laughs> dude, like, 
know, there's got. I think. I think if you assign certain rules to it, and these things, how these things are supposed to work, or how these things are supposed to do it, 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 it makes a little bit more interesting. Because then, mm. you know, if you have these, it, it's kind of like ants fighting God, and you're just kind of like, like, <laughs> dude, come on, really? Like, you know, what is Spider-Man <laughs> yeah. gonna do against Thanos? Like, you know, pew, you know, I'm gonna do it with my webs. He's know, gonna like, catch Mantis. We saw it in the movies. He's yeah. gonna cry. This is still I love you. Spider-Man <laughs> meets Mantis. Dad. I know that's that a big a Infinity moment. War spoiler, guys. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, spoilers. Yeah, yeah. yeah sorry. Um, all right, the next one is, and this is a big one, uh, but this is another one with no rules and basically can do anything that the writer wants it to be, which is the common theme of this panel. Uh, <laughs> the Helmet of Fate. The Ooh. Helmet of Dr. Fate. I think that's another one that comes down to the wielder, though. Like, you Do you need... have a favorite? Do you have a preferred Dr. Fate wielder? Kent Williams, or no, Kent no, Nelson. Kent Nelson, sorry, Kent Williams, yeah, the yeah. sorry, sorry, Kent, <laughs> sorry, Kent. Yeah, I mean, I think he's the most capable one. I can't remember the new kid's name, and I feel very bad for that because that's a great series oh, that yeah. came out of the. You're end not talking the, about the '90s guy with a giant knife well, and a new, mullet, the right? The like, new, oh. new 52 one with the young. <laughs> he looks like Jonah Hex, right? Like, <laughs> with the with the young Egyptian kid in the hoodie. I can't think of his name. I, I will look uh, it up. It's such right a good here. series, though. But I feel like the Helmet of Fate, and I think DC does a better job with their magic, ironically, uh, or their little magic universe, like with Constantine and Zatanna. And Etrigan um, of setting up those boundaries and those rules. Khalid yeah. Nasur. Yeah. Khalid. And then there was Kent Nelson. There was. Uh, hey, where are you getting all this? Are you. Wikipedia. Top of your head? Wikipedia, oh, my friend. Wow. Wikipedia. I thought you knew all this off the no, top. No, I head. wish I did. Uh, oh. there, was, there was Kent Nelson. There's Strauss, apparently, is a Dr. Fate. I've never heard of Strauss before. Probably a flashback. Is that the character? Mullet guy? Uh, no. Uh, I don't know. I don't know who the mullet guy is. That might is. be mullet guy. Uh, 1987, so maybe that's mullet guy. Yeah. Uh, and then there's Hall, who is the, uh, the son of Carter Hall, Hawkman. That's he would, weird. He, Jeff Johns yeah. made him Doctor Fate for a while in the nineties. But how does that work? Because like, isn't Hawkman and Hawkgirl like like thirty something? Like that means they had a kid when they were they like had, seventeen. They had, I think it was like the t- the he's the child of you when they were in the thirties. Worry about when people are having reincarnation, kids too man. much. Reincarnation. Yes. All sorry. right. So or how old Batman oh, is? Sorry, I'm derailing. Sorry. So here's yeah. the, no, it's, here's the problem I feel about Doctor Fate is that Doctor Fate enters the realm. You guys talked about rules and stuff like that where it's like magical users. Like there's no rules for magical users. It's interesting because, um, has anybody out here read uh, the Doctor Strange Jason Aaron run, the run that just happened? Yeah, yeah, it's yes. pretty pretty good, right? <laughs> yeah, it's really good. And one of the things they do in that run is they introduce like all these rules and they also give his powers a finite limit. Like he only can use, kind of like what Spawn used to have back in the day. There's when a you price had to, for magic, man. Exactly. Um, should be. And before that point, it was kind of the idea that Doctor Strange could basically do anything it was like oh here's the the eyes of buck 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 you know and oh that can stop galactus and do all this stuff my mic keeps falling over it's driving well me now crazy. squirrel girl can be galactus so the bar's not that high what <laughs> yeah yeah she oh, beat him in, in her yeah. Yeah. yeah there's like a list of like 75 people in the marvel universe hungry, that so can be galactus now and it gets a little ridiculous was that like is that metaphor for something or is like no, no truly like oh, she gave like you a fed him a, she fed him a moon and he was like oh, i'm not angry anymore i thought like he needed a girlfriend or something like <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he probably. Might, man. He might. I don't know. Galactus, I mean, he's he's, he's... he's the ultimate sugar daddy, man. He's like, yeah. Well, I mean, he's got you, Silver Surfer. You know what they say uh, about shoe size, true. right? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? You know what they say about shoe size, right? Oh. That it doesn't correlate to anything else. That's because correct. Because humans That's have exactly. sex oh. biology. <laughs> but also, he has a pretty bitch and ship. That's, that is true. He has a really, he's a ship the size yeah. of a planet. Chicks it's pretty dig, cool. Chicks dig ships? I think chicks dig the ship, and I think chicks dig the antenna the on the side of his head. The, the, the giant like, squirrel, hey, squirrel girl, I like yeah. my ship. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> as big as a planet. That's how All like right, so <laughs> let's say whatever preferred Dr. Fate user you like, do, does anybody on this table think Dr. Fate, the helmet of Naboo, can take out an Adam Warlock powered Infinity Gauntlet wielder? No. No. No? All right, no. audience. Applaud for Dr. Fate if you think he can beat the Infinity Gauntlet. Crickets. Wow. Oh, okay. Nobody, oh, there's one clap. Nobody <laughs> likes Dr. Fate. All right, we're moving on. Uh, we're I moving feel you. on. You're a brave man. You're a brave man. Yeah, I love your Dr. Fate love. All right. right. Uh, the next one, this oh. is another weapon that has, it has some rules, but lately they've been adding more and more things that it can do. So it's, I think it now is in the period of, uh, this is a weapon that can is do anything. Is it because anything. it's in a movie now? So they're making it more powerful? Well, actually, no, it's because of, uh, there was a certain Jane Foster that wielded it. I'm talking about Mjolnir. Meow, meow. Mjolnir meow, is meow. the next weapon. <laughs> meow, meow. Um, so, you know, for a long time, it, was, it can bring lightning, it could bring storms. It could transform people. They've now done the thing where it can shape shift now. What? Come it can on. now. Yeah. So yeah. there was a scene in the comics of Jane Foster where Thor and Jane Foster appeared in the same scene, and it was Mjolnir in the visage of 
Thor. And then if you see um, uh, Infinity War, sorry, uh, there's a new hammer, which is basically Mjolnir too, uh, that can seems to be uber powerful. Mm-hmm. So I'm counting them as one weapon. We're just going with Thor's hammer, basically. Mjolnir. Um, right. What do you think about Mjolnir? Do you like Mjolnir? Do you hate Mjolnir? What oh, you're asking me? Um, yeah, yeah. I like it in the comic books. I hate it in the movies. What do you hate in the movies? Well, it's just like... It's kind of tropey because, like, the thing about it, the first thing is, if Thanos were there making the Infinity Gauntlet, I'm like, hey, little, like, Peter Dinklage dwarf dude, you're going to make all kinds of cool weapons for all my, my peeps because we're going to have, we're going to be powered up and we're going to, you know what I mean? We're going to have like, a hammer army. We're going to have a hammer army. I would make that guy... <laughs> Fashion all these cool weapons, all these cool armor, and, and have you not read Fear itself? No. Oh yeah, I remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about it is, though, it's just kind of like it just seems like a little too easy. Like, oh well, I could have gotten my hammer any time. You know, it's like um, again, it, I, for me, it's like it makes these things a little bit too easy. And it's like, oh, that's all you had to do is just talk to the mm. door if you can get a hammer and you know restart. There's the a, there's a there's a finite amount of uru. In the universe, and that's the I would material. use it all if I were Thanos. Uru all the time. If, if the yeah. world was ending, <laughs> that's right. I, I would I would do Uru for everything. I'd make an and Uru my Chevy Camaro because that the big dude the big dude is always getting right? his butt kicked by everybody. Cosmic like, Ghost Rider guys. Who was it in the Black Order? Who's the big guy who's always getting beat up by everybody? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't only remember. know he got his arm none of their blown names. off. I don't have any like, Maw, yeah. and he's the the preacher guy who's like, "You should be thankful that you're being killed by Thanos." He looks like Squidward. <laughs> Your neck like shall Squidward. be snapped by Thanos, and yeah, you should. Lesson. Who was Carrie Coon? Oh, She's the only one I care about. Proxima Midnight? Yes. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, what do you think about Meow Meow? Uh, I'm a fan of Mjolnir. I think it's cool. Wait, comics or movie? Or you like them both? I like them both. I don't have a problem with it's it. It's not Mjolnir. Like, you like Chris Helmsworth. It's fine. Uh, he's my... He's not my preferred Hollywood Chris. Really? Yeah. Which one, Evans? Yeah. Oh, I thought, I thought you'd he's be more nice, of a Pratt guy. He's but, a nice you know, human. Like, I don't know if I could get along with Chris Pratt. He seems like a very funny dude. I don't, know I don't like funny I think things. this is funny how this has turned into like... <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm about, sorry. About, about like, who's the ultimate Hollywood Chris? <laughs> it's Chris Evans because he's Chris a cute versus dog. Chris. Do uh, no, I think Chris Pine is the ultimate comic book oh, weapon. No. Um, um, his face is so rigid with plastic surgery. No. I'm no, I'm a, <laughs> if I have, I'm a Loki fan, so... So, oh. but what I like about the about Mjolnir is that since apparently we um, had to kill one of the coolest Asgardians, who was also the doorman to Asgard, I like now that it's it holds on to the Rainbow Bridge because the Rainbow Bridge, the Bifrost is one of my favorite things about Norse mythology. One of the things yeah, that I think I they adapted it's one of the, coolest things the, the movies. best. Yeah, yeah. The visual of it is really cool. And I love it. how they just keep breaking it in every movie. Mm-hmm. So if that's what we get to preserve it, um, I can live with that. I yeah. don't. I think it beats the Infinity Gauntlet, though, or uh, a green, or Lantern I, I, Ring. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest on this list that I have, and I don't know if we'll get to everything on my list. I don't think anything's gonna beat the 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 Infinity Gauntlet, with the exception of one thing, just because it's so ridiculous. So I'm gonna bring this up to you. Do you want me to get to the one thing that I think oh, could beat it, or do you want to know? Go, I you, know. You want to get to the list. Oh, wait, sorry. No. It's another Marvel Comics yes, item. Yes, I know. I, I know, know what you it know, is. You know yeah, it's, it's, I know what it is. The Silver Surfboard. Oh, let's just get no. right to it. Me, no. me, me and John Boyer are jazzing about it. All right, let's see. Okay, uh, I think I know what it is, but... I'm talking about the Ultimate Nullifier. Is that what you're talking about? No, I was talking about uh, Molecule Man's uh, wand. Oh, oh that's, that's so a good funny, choice, I was just, he, can, he can transmute what anything about, and change anything. What about anything. Black Bolt's voice? Uh, it's strong. I don't know if it's... I wonder if he sounds like... Justin Guarini, you see him in the Dr. Pepper, like, it's a sweet one. Yeah, he sounds like that. I like that joke, too. Black Bolt's always like his boy band song. Yeah, yeah. Um, Jason Derulo auto tune. But I think Ultimate Nullifier as well, too, because those are like kind of MacGuffins that haven't really been defined by anything. Same well, with Malco Man, too. It's interesting, too, because the Ultimate Nullifier, again, is a Jack Kirby Stanley thing that was created when Galactus first appeared. When Galactus was first coming in the comic books in Fantastic Four, 49, 50. I don't, I think, I don't know if he appears in 49. I think he appears in 50 for the first time. But it's this weapon that can blink the universe out of existence. And it's so powerful that nobody in all of comics history has ever decided to use it. And it's, it's Command Z in Photoshop. Basically. <laughs> it's basically ultimate control delete of the universe. Um, How does Thanos not know about this? <laughs> uh, well, I don't think Thanos has existed at the time. But, oh. it, but it's basically the Watcher tells Reed Richards that this is the only thing you can use because nobody has ever stopped Galactus. And it basically, you know, Reed stops Galactus because he bluffs him. He's like, look, I'm going to click this button. And Galactus is like, whoa, whoa, dude, even I'm not that crazy. Chill. Chill, man. 
Um, don't take away my antennae. Can Franklin Richards out null the nullifier? Franklin Richards does not exist at the time of Reed Richards. Yeah, but first he exists game. now. Uh, ooh. Oh, yeah. That's I true. actually think. Yeah. You know what? To be honest with you, <laughs> I'm yeah, gonna, but he can make realities, but with the reality stone, he can do the same thing. Yeah. But I think with the ultimate nullifier, you just. I'm gonna say but this. You kill everybody. You kill yourself. I too. think Franklin Richards is the living ultimate nullifier now in comic books because he's so powerful that yeah, he creates universes, mm -hmm. he controls Galactus. Um, I think we should. I think Franklin Richards is now being introduced into this uh. list. Uh, I think Franklin child Richards, child labor, a tiny yes. blonde child. Do it. Yeah, yes. I think I think Franklin Richards can take out that Infinity Gauntlet with no problem. Can you imagine Franklin Richards with the Infinity Gauntlet. Oh, you yeah. know what? Oh, I know it could take out the Infinity Gauntlet. Sure. Like the one, the one thing that no one can beat, and it's death, right? Death itself. Death is Thanos' girlfriend. Well, not really. He's always breaking her heart. You know, he's she's always breaking his heart. Yeah. He's always crying he keeps, over her. He keeps killing himself to hang out with her. I know. To like go he's over like, and kill my dad for you. Yeah. Yeah. Be my girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, she's just like no, but she loves Deadpool. So she loves Deadpool now. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Why is that? I don't, I don't is Deadpool it. breaking the fourth wall comic book weapon? Can we consider that? What do you guys think? <laughs> like that? That's sort yeah. of a weapon because he can sort of like see his death coming before it happens. Well, and then there's that whole arc where he wants to die and. Yeah, I remember that. That's true. From like, I don't know, five years ago. Is that when he faces off with the Hulk? I'm not going to say that I read it. Okay. I just remember the covers because <laughs> death is like cradling him and he's like, I guess I'll find yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. But for me, like I said, like, because I'm, I just love the original Fantastic Four run, the, the Stan Lee, yeah. Kirby run so much that to me, I still see that ultimate nullifier as like this ultimate thing. And I know it's been like played over and over and over in the comic books Well, a it's lot. like the Scarlet Witch's powers. It's yeah. been... It's been used it's too been many down. times. And, or it's like the angels in Doctor Who. Like, you can ring that bell only so many times before you're like, I don't care anymore. Yeah. Hey, I, I've got a question. Wait, sure. does Thanos get to decide when he snaps his finger who lives and who dies? Because if not, then, like, if you're fighting what, Thanos, what? I'm like, I'm going to go after the ultimate nullifier. I'm going to send a whole team and, like, you know, if half the team dies, that's fine. We still get the ultimate nullifier. Like, dude, like, he loses, right? Like, you're. That's sort of true. I would say, I, you know, I'm kind of on the fence. I think Ultimate Nullifier would, would, would trump anything. That's, again, this all-powerful MacGuffin that, like... But the interesting uh, thing is that if you click the Ultimate Nullifier, there's no clicking back. It's erasing the universe and never bringing it back. Well, it's, it's kind of like... It's just being like, all right, guys, we had a good run. Click, you know, like... So it's basically a PC. Once it's done, it's done. It's done, like, it's yeah, done. It's like, <laughs> that's why it's the ultimate. That's why, that's why even, like I said, Galactus was just like, you're crazy humans. I mean, until all new Marvel now. <laughs> I also like the idea that us, at humanity, that we're the only ones crazy enough to click this thing. Like, we're the only species in all of infinity that we're like, we're going to do it. Well, we're going to do it. Just to get a little dark. <laughs> we're not that far from that, really. <laughs> in the real world. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not. That's like I said, that's, that's why I think it, it worked because Galactus is just like, oh my God, these crazy monkeys. It's funny to me that a lot of these weapons are Marvel based the ones that are like the ultimately ridiculously yeah, yeah, yeah. powerful and a lot of them are Kirby <laughs> creations Kirby creations, yeah. Kirby creations yeah. but he, he did the mother boxes the thing about yes. mother boxes though, they can do whatever they want too absolutely so, um, but I, I don't know if there's enough history on mother boxes because it's never been fully explained like the DC mo movie thing is kind of like we're just terraform planets. There like, is sort I was of like, man, that was Superman, Man of Steel, man. Yeah. You can't do that joke again. There is <laughs> sort of an opposite though. <laughs> and not to, have it be brainiac. Yeah, yeah. There is a DC yeah. opposite though to the ultimate nullifier. And it's the miracle machine. Oh what is that? Yeah. So the miracle machine Is that Miracle Man's? Uh no, it's oh. a it's a Legion of Superheroes machine. Do you guys mm. know the Miracle Machine? Sounds fancy. It was basically used in, in yeah, this guy right here, the awesome <laughs> beard right here. He knows it. Um yeah, it's basically like it's a Legion of Superheroes thing. Um, I don't think it has any, it, it's not a Kirby device, but I think it comes from like Al Plastino's time in the Legion of Superheroes. It's used in Final Crisis, and it's basically the device that rebuilds the universe. So it's this device that like looks very Kirby-esque, you press a button, and whatever you kind of wish to happen, happens. And in Final Crisis, when the universe was destroyed by Darkseid, Superman used the Miracle Machine. Oh, for his Superman wins one wish. Final Crisis. Superman wins Final Crisis with the Miracle Machine. He he because he's the only one that survives. What? And so and so he turns on the Miracle Machine, and because he wishes for the best of us, everybody kind of has a happy ending, and all the dead people come alive. <laughs> yeah, even the Joker. Yeah. So like you could, it's one of those things where like okay, you could click the Ultimate Nullifier as long as like within a nanosecond you click the Miracle Machine. Yeah. <laughs> but you got to be like. Whip snap. What if you're just wishing for like, I want a popsicle. <laughs> <laughs> then you would have the biggest miracle of popsicle. Or of if all you're time. chip, you just want nuts. Yeah, like, yeah. I want all the nuts. A giant walnut. Give me all the nuts. Yeah, like, I'd be yeah. happy in the world. <laughs> yeah, you know what? That's kind of that, that is kind of interesting because mm -hmm. it's kind of like the polar opposite of things. I don't know. That's a, that's a tough thing. 
that's why it's always easier to like that's why it's always hard to create things that are so powerful because you kind of write yourself into like well what trumps that and it's yeah. like it's a human collective and you're like not really because he just snaps you out of existence because exactly. like how they how they defeat Thanos the first time they got him to take off the glove they made him a farmer yeah well he became a farmer and you then to be a farmer they, come on, they come got on. the gauntlet from him and they yeah somebody yeah. somebody else put the gauntlet on and then rewrote nebula the did and then adam warlock and then brought the people back yeah. Yeah. yeah oh really yeah. nebula wow yeah it was nebula yeah nebula defeats um thanos but then she is going to remake the universe but she's too like corrupted and angry at him so they give it to adam warlock because why would you let a woman reset the world when you could have a man do it well, and a I'm white, not going to touch that. I'm married, so I can't. savior man at that. <laughs> I'm not going to sleep on the couch for that one. <laughs> Adam Warlock's yellow. Whatever. He's yeller. He's yeller. He's like a Simpson. He's yeller. He's yeller. <laughs> um, all right. So, all right. We left it in comic books here. Um, right. I really quickly, before we go to you guys, because I want to hear if you guys have any debates of weapons or if you think we're stupid or whatever, I, I'll bring the mic out to you. I don't want to everything. Um, <laughs> Is there anything, are there any weapons outside of comic books, like in movies yes. and stuff like that, that you think sh- should definitely be in this? I want to hear, like, let's go out to movies. Anybody? Oh, uh, Kevin Feige. <laughs> Kevin Feige is the <laughs> ultimate comic book weapon. All right. That's right. Like he is. That is true. And then probably Dan DiDio for DC. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think Kevin Feige's hat is definitely in this argument. I think uh, that thing uh, hides a powerful black Dave hole Filoni's of hat. creativity and. Uh, Wisdom. That's uh, Dave Filoni's Cabo hat is the same thing. Uh, I think we'd be remiss to not mention Excalibur. It's one of oh, the most powerful that's right. yeah, mythic that's weapons of all times. Um, How about that? We cheat, talked about this before the panel and remembered that it is in comics in a couple different it incarnations. It is in Camelot 3000. Yeah. Yeah. Mage, the hero defined. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, but I it's think pretty powerful in Mage. You get, and you guys out there well, read Mage? What does it do? Does it make you, you just like, I can sword fight good now? Or what, what is it Well, like? it's interesting. You can reunite and forge the country of Albion. So <laughs> did anybody here see <laughs> Uh, dragons? Did anybody here see the terrible King Arthur movie that Guy Ritchie oh, made? Oh, I, I really like that movie, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I, I thought it was. Oh, I thought it was half good. But <laughs> the interesting thing, the interesting thing in that movie is that if you notice, which is something My that I thought hurts. the whole movie, when he <laughs> grabbed Excalibur, it. he got superpowers. That's true. Which I thought was really cool, and I was like, why wasn't the whole movie that, guys? Why save that? But like he 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 grabbed Excalibur and it was sort of like he went into flash time and he was faster than like, everybody else. And like Excalibur became a lightsaber in that movie, which I thought was really cool and unique to that movie. So if that's the Excalibur we're talking about, hell yeah. It's one and of he fought Death ones. Dealer. That was awesome. Yeah, he did. Kind of. Yeah. I mean, the visuals of that movie I thought were yeah, really good. I thought were really well done. Yeah, yeah. And it was really good. Is anything else besides Excalibur? I can't think of anything. Oh, the, one, there, the One Ring? Ah, uh, the One Ring. It even yeah. corrupts the most pure and earnest among us. But can us. the One Ring do anything besides turn yourself invisible? Like, <laughs> not if, really. If, if you're not Sauron, can you do anything with that ring besides being invisible? You know, if you're a guy and you're in high school, it's a pretty good ring to have, I guess. <laughs> hypothetically. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, that gets, I guess there's a little creep factor to that. But, yeah. Um, but I think those that's the thing, though, with all these. I think the thing that we're touching on is with all these absolute powerful items. Mm-hmm. They corrupt absolutely. Because I'm surprised the ultimate nullifier didn't go to like Reed Richards' head. It's like, look at me, man. I'm smart. And I got an ultimate weapon. You but know? Reed's but, already like that. Kind of. Well, <laughs> Reed which, is which, crazy, by the way. <laughs> yeah. He's one step away from Doctor Doom. He really is. Yeah. And that's why I like their relationship so much because... They're the same person, basically. They're basically the same person. And it's only Reed's family that doesn't make him insane as Doctor Doom. That's if he true. didn't have... And that's why I like in the Ultimate Universe, if you ever read any of those, Reed Richards goes insane in the Ultimate Universe because he doesn't have Sue. And he becomes... Oh, really? This, he becomes Does this, Sue die? Uh, or she just said, ah, you're too creepy for me. No, yeah, you know, she, like yeah she basically like dumps him. Oh, And because of that, he becomes a super does villain. Reed, does Reed hit her just like everyone else in the Ultimate Universe no, hits she their hits, ladies? she hits him. <laughs> okay. She hits him, but he gets, like a big, he gets a big scar. He becomes like this villain called the Maker. Because he decides to do like Franklin Richards. He's like, I'm going to make my own universe. Screw women. <laughs> I'm going to make my own girlfriend and she's going to like yep. me forever. She's going to like me and she's going to like Pokemon and video <laughs> games. And I think this is the thing we're settling on. These guys who have absolute powers like Thanos and Reed Richards, they're just doing it to impress some chick. Really? Yep. Death or Sue. You know, it's like, yeah, death death or Sue. impress oh, you now? Come on. You know, like, yeah, yeah. She's like, not really. <laughs> Not really. All right. I am going to come out into the audience. Uh, is there anybody that is would like to talk about, is there a weapon that we missed? Or oh, By the way, we're giving away, we have a John Boy Myers print Ooh. right here, signed by John Boy from Jupiter Jet, and this is going to be the prize. For I the, just devalued it. You just devalued it. This is, the pri- <laughs> this is the prize for the best question. Is there anybody out there that would like to uh, bring an argument right here? Or you can just ask a question. That's also Or you can ask a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can ask a question. Let's bring it down to 
I walk down to you. All right, so I have I have two. One from Marvel. You guys can talk about one from DC. Okay. So the the Marvel ones from way back. Secret Wars, the original. Oh, the Beyonder. The Beyonder's power. Ah. And Doom showed that he couldn't really, because Claw tricked him, mind tricks, kind of oh. similar to Thanos. And then on the DC side of things, Sam Humphrey's recent Green Lantern's run, they showed the Phantom Ring, which doesn't have the limitation of only an hour. It's too There's many a Phantom Ring Too now. many rings. And it's also, already a death ring. And also, anybody can, anybody can wield it. Wow. Anybody can wield the Phantom um, Ring. I think the Beyonder thing we found out in uh, Illuminati Marvel series that he is a out of control. Inhuman, right? Inhuman who is just like kind of a baby inhuman. I don't like that. Which like is dumb. That. Yeah. But, you know, they're like, that's how they get around that. So. What um, was the first one you said? I forgot. I'm sorry. Oh, see, the Beyonder. Oh, Beyonder. Yeah, the Beyonder. And the Phantom so, Ring. Yeah, there are too many rings. And then the, uh, so I don't know what exactly, because there was a limit to the Beyonder's power. And I think they, he, I think he, because like, I think once he brought all the planets together, he was, the rest was like smoke and mirrors, I think is what they were saying, if I remember right. I think it was all. Like in here. I, well, I mean, truly the ultimate villain is the Marvel editorial staff for depowering him. <laughs> that, that is Whoa. true. Well, then the ultimate, the ultimate. Those editors are Brian, super that villains. Brian, that was a Brian Michael Bendis story. That was a Brian Michael Bendis story. Well, then Brian Michael Bendis is the ultimate Marvel there villain. Go. There you go. All right, that's good. All right, let's um, go to the, uh, Mr. Flash. I saw his hand back here. There's a phantom ring? It's a phantom ring, man. Man, what, too many. Hold on, crazy pills? Stand up, Mr. Like, Flash. What's, what's your name, by the way? Uh, Tyler. Okay, Tyler. So, I'm going to put this in the words of Deadpool. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. It, what if you assemble the boy band? The, the X-Men boy band. Ooh. The, okay, go. It's all just Summers Brothers with their shirts off. Yes. <laughs> I'd buy front row ticket. I, I don't think I would go to that. <laughs> like, if, Not really my thing. If you got Colossus... Uh, uh, I like him Wolverine too. Wolverine and Deadpool all together, like, and, and misogynistic teenage warhead. Like they all, all them together, are just this perfect team of strength and inhumanness. I don't know if that ever happened because Deadpool is not a team player. He's too much of a wild card. But gotta remember, he has like, if Thanos continues, yeah, then that's true. He, he's risking his wife. And he cares about really nothing else but his wife, so. Ooh. Well, mm. you know what, though? The thing would be, like, in the comics, I could see that. I can't see it in the movies because mutants technically do not exist in the Marvel. I mean, let's be cinematic. honest here. Deadpool snapped away immediately, right? Like, in the, in the snap of half the universe going away, Deadpool disappears. Oh, Wait, that's what well, Deadpool can't disappear. Cause it, with, with the, oh, you think he, see, he sees it coming? Uh and like sidesteps it, I'd give that to. Deadpool. Do you think all the Do you think all the people with regenerative healing factors just like their atoms are just like trying to reform and they're just struggling and you see these little clouds of dust that's, and it's that's like Wolverine. Wolverine's hell. It's Wolverine constantly Wolverine like reforming and Laura the way. Way just like <laughs> he's just walking and then like he's got some dust behind him. Yeah, like, he's constantly like blowing those icky skin flakes he, off. He, he walks into his house like his God, he's just so looking gross at him, already. Just like they're tracking that. in dirt. Hey, he's burned up like a weenie, huh? He's like it, Freddy Krueger. Yeah. Like, thanks, man. Thanks. <laughs> All right, anybody else? Oh, okay, right here, sir. Here, I'll come around here. I'll come around to you. Here we go. What's your name? Anakin. Right, this guy has the most badass that name. That is awesome. Anybody? <laughs> All right, um, going off of a different type of fandom, what about all three of the Deathly Hallows? Ooh. Ooh. Oh, interesting. That's you a know? good call. That's a good call. You know, we the didn't, fact We didn't that... talk about that. You know what? The fact that Harry Potter could have gotten all three if he wanted to and didn't. He's a completely mediocre wizard. That's why. No, what the, an idiot. <laughs> you know what the thing I, one of the things I hate. He would have uh, failed without Hermione. One of the he things sucks. I hated about that last movie is that he gets, he gets the Elder Wand. He has the most powerful wand he of all wizards. And he just goes, nah. He throws it away. And I'm like, no, keep yeah. that thing, you idiot. <laughs> but he had the, didn't he have the cloak too? And then he just had to get the other thing. Yeah. He still has the cloak. Yeah, it's yeah. just like. The only thing he didn't have was the I'll resurrection stone. I'll punch him in the stone. face. I'd be like, wrong. Like, he had the resurrection stone? Oh, he had all three? God, you idiot, Harry. Yeah. He's, <laughs> Harry's kind of the worst guy. You know what? Guy. Everybody who dies in that last movie, it's his fault. So I'd be like, there you know go. what? My favorite marauder dies. That's right. Yeah. He could have brought them all back. Could have done everything. You know how like, he could have never caused the whole war if he just died as a baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, that's then. cold. Oh, that is cold. <laughs> So, our, so I take it. When are you guys having kids? So, it is, <laughs> wow. I'm actually rereading um, the first. I don't know. Book I don't right know because I don't know what the Deathly Hallows do all three together. Because Harry was such an idiot that he just didn't use. He never any got of them. Isn't it? Don't they together? say that they make the control of the ultimate 
uh, like the ultimate controller of life, power of life and death. Yeah. So it's basically the infinity of, yeah. gauntlet of their universe, right? Sort of. Yeah. Except, yeah, he can't really rewrite reality though. And leave it to a little kid to mess it all up, man. But is but yeah. even man. I mean, even if he'd gotten them all at the same time and had the wherewithal to use it, um, I mean, we know Harry's a good person, but is he like a powerful? enough person that you would want to have in that position. Like Dumbledore is a wizard who has skill and moral compass, who would be a good person to and be in charge of something Dumbledore basically like had that. all three at the same time. But he too, killed himself though, basically. He let yeah. for, for Harry. Yeah. Not worth it, man. I'd be like, you know what? Yeah. He just get a death once, maybe not twice. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. All right, is anybody else? The real else? villain oh. is Harry Potter. Right back here in the back. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna it's walk. like the real villain in the Marvel movies is Tony Stark when you think about oh, it. Oh, for real? Yeah, for real, right. though. He's a super villain. And a lot of the last movie was like, guys, remember we like Tony Stark. <laughs> Here's what's, your, what's your name, sir? Uh, my name is Matt. Um, my question is, you guys talked about the importance of user, and I think you left out my favorite user of the Infinity Gauntlet, Dr. Doom. Oh, oh, was he? Did but he he's have a the bad guy. <laughs> That's a fair point. Did, did he, he use the, it before Secret Wars? Did he have it before then, or or was it during? It's a bunch it was of during Secret Wars, right? Googling yeah, 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 going on right now. Because <laughs> isn't that like a famous cover? Like he has it. Yeah, yeah. He has the. Wow, I didn't. I forgot all about that. I forgot about that too. You know what? Something happened because uh, I think Von Doom at the end he wants to be the one who does it on his own. He doesn't like giving credit to like something else in order to win. Mm-hmm. I think that's his always his fail. Like with the re- things I've always read about him was like is his ego. Hubert's like I don't need this I don't need this glove. He's like that guy, I don't need this gun, John, I'll keep fucking fighting you, you know. The guy, <laughs> crazy guy from the the commando movie, you know, he just like I don't need this. He's got something to prove, you know. Like, written by Jeff Loeb. Is oh really? really? Commando wow. is written by Jeff Loeb. That guy is everywhere. Batman man. Long Halloween writer wow. Jeff Loeb wrote Commando. That's awesome. So yeah. Um, that's yeah, a good, that yeah. is a good call. Dr. Doom, I think Dr. Doom with the Infinity Gauntlet is more powerful than Adam Warlock. I think because he's just smarter with it. He's such a genius. Like now Adam Warlock has... But do you has, think he uses it for good? we talk about it with Reed Richards no. though, I think he would get, he would go, he would go megamaniac. We've seen Dr. Dr. Doom in the Jonathan Hickman Secret Wars rewrote the universe and oh. became, and set himself up as the ultimate god. Um, so he basically did what Thanos did. He did, did what Thanos mm-hmm. did, except so. he, he rewrote reality, took control of it. He made Sue his wife, and Franklin and Valeria. Oh, that's Franklin, messed up. Franklin that's and right. Valeria became his He took kids. his yeah. best friend's wife. Yep. And he wrote... Well, because he's in love. You know, because everyone's in love with He Sue. basically made Reed Richards disappear from he's existence. He's just a blonde. Too. Like, what is it, blonde? It's like, mm-hmm. no, I mean, nothing against blondes. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> dude, you got all this power. You have a whole country, and you just you just want what you can't have, man. That's, all right, let's go. Uh, I saw I saw this gentleman right here back. If you're still, go, you're still willing, this will be the final... Question mentioned. Yeah, we, here. we got the five minutes. We got sign. the five minute warning. So. Um, what's your name, sir? Oh, uh, Medi. Um, you you guys were mentioning about Doom, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. So, uh, the one thing I do remember with Doom though was that wasn't he doing everything because of his mom's soul because it was trapped by Mephisto. Uh, That's the reason why he kept searching out for different kinds of power and whatnot. Like he was looking for the ultimate power. Basically to to take free out, his mom. To mm. Take out the devil. He's yeah, a mama's basically, boy. Basically. That's the difficult thing about comic book morality yeah. is like you Thanks do man. have to save people's souls every once in a while. Hold on a second. He's got, he's if, a, if we were mentioning like other fandom and everything like that, I was thinking about the Ark from Raiders of the Lost Ark. Oh, yeah. I've never seen that movie. That what? Is, that's, an, that's an interesting... No. I've never seen any Who of those. Are you? Movies. What? Like, what? <laughs> I didn't win. Thanks, oh that, my God. Uh, <laughs> Jason, what is going on here, man? Look, I have tried. We have had to have a serious I, talk I, after I, this. Right? I have tried. <laughs> Um, the Ark of the Covenant is yeah, an interesting. That's a, good, that's a good one. Is that the one that melts people? Yes, it melts people. That's it gross. melts Nazis specifically. Oh, but that's melts, fine then. Let's bring that melts, back. It melts everybody. But uh, that's a really good. Um, Hashtag melt Nazis. <laughs> that's really good. That's because that that's is. How you defeat Nazi Captain America? You just give him the Ark. Well, how do you defeat? I think they like, just gave him a new creative team, and now he's not a Nazi. Oh, that's, that's how, do you, <laughs> how do you defeat God in a box? How, you, you Satan got, in a box? Oh, well, there you go. Satan in a box. <laughs> Nailed it. Yeah. Isn't that the Cenobites, yeah. though? The like, Dark yeah. of the Covenant. Yeah. That's, the, that's the opposite. The Dark uh, of the you Covenant. Just, you just opened up a whole can. That's like another hour talk, man. Oh, man. That's Ark, Ark of the oh, Covenant yeah. versus, wow. versus... Hellraiser. Hellraiser. Yeah. Okay, oh. sure. I'm good at that. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have we're gonna have protests here, I'm sure. Like, oh, that, man. Sure that. That's so awesome. Yeah. That's so awesome. Um, good question. Yeah. You know what? I, I like that question so much, sir, that you're going to get the print. Uh, that was a great <laughs> so good job. So after the panel, you come up here, or come up here right now. 
Congratulations on winning this print. Um, guys, really quickly, don't leave the panel because we want to do a big selfie with you all that are all here. Um, but really quickly, John Boy, thank you so much for oh, joining the panel. Pleasure. Where can they? Thank where's you. your table at? Where can they find I'm you? I'm at F5. Uh, so just swing on by, say hey, give me a high five. You know, it'd be mm -hmm. nice to talk to you guys. Um, just connect. You know, yeah. I'm a fan like you guys, so yeah. I love talking about this stuff. And if you guys like this discussion, please check out um, our podcast, Geek History Lesson. It's at geekhistorylesson.com. It's a weekly podcast where we dive deep and all this stuff. Thank you guys so much for coming. This was a lot of fun. And uh, remember, the Ark of Covenant beats all. <laughs>